Hey guys, Dylan here. Welcome back to our in-depth series on operating the Red Epic Dragon. Today, we'll be diving deep into ISO. First off, let's understand how ISO works with most cameras. Usually a higher ISO just means that the image as a whole is brightened. To do this, the cameras with a set ISO higher would typically amplify the signal and filter it before being recorded. This caused the ISO to be baked into the raw data. This can add noise to the midtones, shadows, certain colors, as well as reduce the dynamic range, thus limiting post-production flexibility. With RED, the original remains unamplified before saving as a raw file. This way, the maximum amount of data is recorded from the sensor, which allows maximum flexibility for adjusting exposure in post-production. This means you get a full 13 plus stops of dynamic range at any ISO. ISO only affects how the raw data is interpreted. RED cameras capture all the potential dynamic range possible for a given scene and exposure. RED doesn't apply any in-camera noise reduction as they want to maintain the most possible dynamic range, detail, and color information without losing it to aggressive lossy imaging processing techniques. Since we get a constant 13 plus stops of dynamic range at any ISO, the only things that change are where the number of stops are located. At low ISO speeds, most of the dynamic range is below middle gray, whereas at high ISO speeds, most of the dynamic range lies above the middle gray. To go along on this point, in practice, a higher ISO setting will provide more insurance against clipped highlights, and when highlights do clip, they will appear less abrupt. To show an example of this, I've taken some footage of a bare light bulb with a low light optimized OPF at a range of ISOs. Here we have ISO 250 with the bulb being completely blown out. At ISO 800, you can start to see some of the actual wires in the bulb. And at ISO 3200, you can now see each wire in the bulb, thus showing the increase in highlight retention as we increase the ISO. Here you can see exactly how ISO works and looks on the Red Epic Dragon. These were actually captured images thanks to Phil Holland. You can clearly see with the lower ISO, the dynamic range is more split up between the shadows. Whereas when you use a higher ISO, the dynamic range is split up more in the highlights. So in conclusion, lower ISOs distribute more stops below middle gray, and higher ISOs place more above middle gray. Darker scenes rated at low ISOs, when exposed correctly, benefit from both more light on the sensor, from adding more lights, opening the lens, increasing shutter angle, and the greater concentration of stops dedicated to shadow detail. Bright scenes, which usually have less intense shadow areas, benefit more from the greater overexposure latitude of higher ISOs. This way you're not wasting stops in the shadows where you don't need them as much and putting them where they'll do the most good, which is at the top. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment below. And remember to subscribe to stay updated with our videos. See you next time.